Hi everyone, so a lot of you have been asking me to cover some of the recent Greg Descent drama where he's charging like a thousand dollars for online coaching that isn't even written by him, and he's also DMCA striked smaller channels like Jeffrey Schoolfield. So uh, I figured I would try and disincentivize anyone who is thinking of buying his online coaching. Don't do it. Uh, it's a waste of money. It is way overpriced, and Greg has absolutely no idea of what he's talking about, as I'm about to demonstrate. So about a year ago, I got into, you know, a bit of an argument with Greg over RPE or RIR, reps and reserve. Uh, these are just auto-regulation techniques that allow you to approximate how close you are to failure. There is no magic effort land. All RPE has to be three reps in reserve, and if you train harder, then it's too hard and you can't recover, and next time hold back and then deload for at least a week every month and never push yourself hard, deload and be careful, and oh my goodness, periodization and overload, and yeah, let's throw a bunch of big words, hypertrophy, and yeah, go to the freaking gym and train hard. Is that so hard to do? Yeah, it actually is. Training hard is the hardest part about training hard. So Greg Desette is not a big fan of RPE or RAR, but in the video response I made to Greg last year, I used some of my own lifting progress as evidence that RPE or RAR training works. So my bench went from 210 to 245 in about a month, month and a half, uh, using, you know, these auto-regulation techniques uh, like reps and reserve. So I'd always make sure that I'd start a mezzo off with an RIR target of three, so each set I did, I wouldn't go any closer than three reps shy of failure. And then from week to week, I'd add five to 10 pounds on my main compound lifts like squat, bench, and deadlift. And then eventually, as time went on, um, I'd either hit failure or come really, really close to failure. And at that point, I'd just do a deload and start the whole process over again. And that was working for me back then, and it's still working for me today. Uh, but I looked over the comments in that old video, and uh, Greg seems to have managed to do two things. So for one thing, Greg really managed to confuse his audience. I'd see a lot of Greg Deset fans comment something like this, where they seem to not understand really what RIR or reps and reserve is, and they seem to think that it somehow conflicted with this idea of train harder than last time. So basically they didn't understand that, you know, you can progressively overload while using auto-regulation techniques like RPE or RIR. And I'd also see some comments like this where some Greg Desette fans were convinced that you can only use RPE or RIR if you're like getting back into training or if you're a noob lifter. Um, you know, a bunch of people told me that the only reason I made progress using RPE or RIR was because, you know, these are gains that I had before. So, you know, it's muscle memory. It's not like I made new progress and hit like all time PRs that I never hit before. So first of all, it's completely untrue that the only progress that I've made using RPE or RIR has just been muscle memory. Um, gains that I've already made before, I have been making all time PRs, lifetime PRs for the last few weeks or months at this point. Uh, just a few days ago, I benched 300 pounds for three sets of five. Uh, the best that I've ever done on my channel prior to this year was 280 pounds for, I think it was two sets of three, and they were real grinders. Like, that was RIR zero. That, that was just all-out effort. So that's a pretty massive improvement, going from 280 struggling to get three reps to doing 300 for three sets of five with an RIR of like about two or three. So clearly RPE or RIR works. You know, I was using it a few months ago last year and I was making gains and I'm still making the same steady, consistent, reliable, predictable progress I was making back then. Um, I'm hitting all time PRs. I've been doing that for the last few weeks or few months right now. Um, I, I don't think there's anything else to say. Clearly, you can make gains doing RPE or RAR based training. Um, just because you're not going to, you know, failure all the time, that doesn't mean you're not training hard enough to make progress. 
Um, another really good example is Incline Press. Um, you know, previously on my channel, like I think the heaviest I ever really did on camera was like maybe 210, 215. I, I don't think I ever even got up to doing 225. Um, and last week I did 260 for three sets of five. It was an easy three set of five. Uh, three sets of five. Um, yeah, uh, just today, actually. I didn't film it, unfortunately, but today I did 265 for three sets of five. Again, it was easy. So RPE, RIR works. I, I don't know what to tell you. Like, Greg has made these claims where if you, you know, don't train to failure, you're training like a pussy, it's not hard training. You don't need to train as hard as you can to make gains. In fact, that can hold you back. So this concept sounds very counterintuitive to a lot of people at first, you know, don't train as hard, avoid training to failure, and you'll make more gains. A lot of people think, you know, the harder I train, the more I put into training, the more progress I'll make. But it doesn't actually work that way because there's a fatigue cost with training. If you train as hard as you can all the time, you just can't keep up that pace you'll get way more fatigued way sooner. So that means over a long period of time, you won't be able to do as much work. You won't be able to accumulate for as long. Uh, you won't be able to put as much weight on the bar. You won't be able to add as much volume. So if you can hold back a little bit, you know, for the most part, train about two to three reps shy of failure and maybe save training to failure for just you know, your last week of a mesocycle, and then you do a deload, and you know, you, you restart that process over again, that will allow you to train more for a longer period of time, and you can accumulate longer, you can add more weight to the bar, you can add more volume, do more repetitions, more sets, over a longer period of time versus training to failure. Uh, so, that is why training to failure is likely going to hold uh, hold you back. It holds a lot of people back. You know, Greg Desette, he's genetically gifted and he's on steroids, so he might be able to get away with training like that, but for us mere mortals, yeah, training like that all the time, you're just going to run yourself into the ground. And I'm sure a lot of people watching this video have had this experience where they train as hard as they can all the time and they don't understand why am I not getting stronger? Like, I'm training as hard as I can. I should be getting stronger. I should be getting the most out of my training. But the problem might be that you are just training too hard. You're not allowing your body to recover from training, holding yourself back a little bit, training, you know, about two to three reps shy of failure. Uh, that gives you a little bit, just enough wiggle room to get a stimulus from training, to be able to recover from that training, not accumulate fatigue so quickly, and it allows you to just incrementally increase, you know, the weight, the amount of reps you're doing, the amount of total volume you're doing, and make steady, consistent progress. And RPE and RIR have unique benefits for strength training because these autoregulation methods where you avoid training to failure allow you to perform... Uh, more of your total volume with a greater force production. So what I mean by that is, uh, let's say you're doing a bench press and you're doing ten se uh, a set of 10 to failure. You'll notice that the first few reps of that set, you can move the bar a lot faster. So, you know, there's more bar velocity, you can generate more force. So as the set goes on, as you do more and more reps, you accumulate fatigue within that set. So by the end of the set, the last few reps, you're going to have trouble getting the bar up. The bar is going to move a lot slower. You're not going to be able to produce much force. So for strength training specifically, if you can do more volume where you produce more force, uh, that can actually help you get stronger and produce more power. So if you can implement a technique like RPE or RIR, where you avoid training to failure, that means you can do more repetitions with greater force production, thus uh, allowing you to build more strength and power, and there's research supporting this idea. So in the study, they took 22 men and they split them into two different groups. The first group performed four sets of 10, and uh, each set was performed very close to failure. The second group performed eight sets of five with the same weight. So that means uh, they were doing fewer reps per set with the same weight. That means they're not going anywhere close to failure, but the volume was equated here. They're both lifting the same amount of weight. 
It's just that the second group was doing more total sets with fewer reps per set so that they can avoid going to failure. And unsurprisingly, the group that did eight sets of five, they ended up growing the same amount of muscle, which again isn't surprising because volume was equated here. But what's interesting is they gained significantly more power and strength, and that's likely due to them performing more total volume with greater force production. So if your goal is to get stronger and be more powerful, which is why I'm sure a lot of people start weight training in the first place, Clearly, using some sort of autoregulation technique like RPE or RIR, which allows you to relatively accurately approximate failure, it's going to be really good for strength training because it seems like avoiding failure for strength training allows you to produce more force. And if you can produce more force over, you know, every set you perform, you're going to get stronger. So... Remember, like, Greg is the one, you know, speaking against this, saying, like, oh, RPE is for pussies, you know, it's too easy, so stay away from RPE training, it makes things too easy. Like, it's just complete nonsense. If a certain training method it allows you to better achieve your goals, why wouldn't you do it? Like, who cares if it's easy? Who cares if some roided out idiot on YouTube is yelling at you saying you're a pussy for training that way? Well, clearly this type of training is better for strength. So why wouldn't you do it? And um, I also have to address Greg's just bullshit. He just lies constantly about this and deliberately tries to confuse people. So Greg Descent bothered to leave a comment on my video. This was his idiotic response. You need to watch more of my vids since you are training harder than last time as evidenced by adding weight to the bar for the same reps. So Greg is deliberately trying to confuse people here. This argument was never about progressive overload. That is what he means by training harder than last time, progressive overload. Training has to progressively get more difficult over time or else you won't make any progress. I agree. Training does have to get more difficult over time. That has nothing to do with RPE or RIR. So this is why, you know, people are leaving comments like this on my video, because this idiot is deliberately trying to confuse people into thinking that RPE or RIR somehow has a conflict with progressive overload when it doesn't. Greg knows this, he's just trying to make himself seem right so that he can sell you overpriced training programs. Greg then continues, also, I do not tell everyone to go to failure on every set. In fact, I warn beginners and people getting back into training to not go to failure. So this is a flat out lie. Greg has stated multiple times that everyone, regardless of training experience, should always train to failure on every single set in every single session, and he even said that he trains that way and everyone should train that way. Here's the goddamn clip. Oh, but I'm natural. I can't train hard because I might be sore. I'm natural. I can't do it. Greg, you're on that there test stuff. You're on creatine. Me, me, crybaby. Frig off. Just shut up, you natural pussies. I trained natural longer than 99% of you. How did I train when I grew up? A lot of people ask me. I went all out, harder, all out. Squats, 425 for 10. I'm going for 11. If I can get 11, I'm going for 12. Half the time I couldn't even put the weight back on the rack because I go all out. That's how you train. When you, when, this is what I tell everyone. This is how you know you're training hard. For $1,000 per rep, how many more reps would you get? They're usually, my clients will answer, I don't know, like two or three more. I'm like, it wasn't all out then. How hard was, it? oh man, it was hard. For a thousand bucks a rep, how many could you have gotten more? Well, probably two or three, five, I don't know, for a thousand dollars. It should be zero. You should be training on every hard set as if you're being paid to go all out. That's how you train. Oh, yeah, I bet this is a really tough day for you, huh, Greg? Because now you can't get away with your lies anymore. So the fact is, Greg is an ignorant idiot and he doesn't know much about training. His training recommendations are just based off of his own personal experience and what worked for him and what worked for him probably isn't going to work for you because you're not a genetically elite pro bodybuilder who's on high doses of anabolic steroids. So yeah, 
Greg can train to failure all he wants because he's genetically elite. He takes tons of drugs. You don't. So if you train like that, uh, you're going to burn out super quickly. You're probably going to plateau or your performance is going to go down because training to failure all the time that hard. Uh, it's just way too fatiguing to keep up your performance. And then you're probably also going to get sick or injured. And the only reason Greg has walked back his claims recently, where now he's claiming, oh, well, you know, not everybody should train to failure. The only reason he's doing that now is because, you know, the, the science-based fitness community has completely embarrassed him on this topic and proven that his recommendations are just stupid and dangerous. And to this day, Greg won't admit that he was ever wrong about RPE and RIR, and he keeps putting out misinformation about these training principles just so that he doesn't have to admit he's wrong. This guy clearly isn't interested in learning. He's clearly not interested in educating anyone. He just wants to do whatever he thinks will make him more money. So don't buy this guy's online coaching. Uh, not only is it overpriced, but the guy clearly doesn't know what he's talking about. And worse yet, he doesn't even have an interest in bettering himself, in learning, in changing his coaching practices to, you know, better you or better educate you. He just wants quick cash. So don't support him. There's way better online coaches out there who charge way less. Honestly, I think you'd get more out of, you know, a free cookie cutter program that you can find online than from Greg Desette's coaching. Like, what, do you need somebody to tell you? Oh, just trade harder, trade harder. Oh, you, you, RPE, what's that? It's, it's stupid. I, I don't understand it. it. It's pussy training. What use are you going to get out of somebody like this? So, yeah, $1,000 for online coaching. It's stupid. Uh, just find online coaching from someone else. And one last thing. I've offered to debate Greg on numerous different topics, including this one, but... Every time I get a response back from Greg, uh, he tells me that I'm a mosquito. I'm too insignificant to, for him to waste his time debating me. Well, uh, you know, Greg, you waste your time on tiny channels all the time. Uh, you tried to bully a girl who had less than 2K subscribers because she gave a bad review to your, uh, for your cookbook. Uh, you tried to DMCA strike Jeffrey Verity Schoolfield because he gave a bad review for your online coaching. You waste your time on tiny channels that are insignificant mosquitoes, in your words, all the time. But you won't engage with me because you know that I'm right, you're wrong. You know that I'm smarter than you and I'd make you look like an idiot. Uh, so I think that speaks volumes, uh, you know, about how little Greg knows about training. Um, he's, he's not a dumb guy. He's smart enough to know just how stupid he is. So don't buy his training. He knows exactly what he's doing and he's just trying to scam you out of money. So, um, that's my little public service announcement for today. Hope you, uh, enjoyed the video, got some good information out of it. And of course, check out all the links in the description. If you want to uh, check out my Patreon, uh, get some vegan pet food. Links are in the description with the discount code so you can get 10% off of any order. Uh, you can also get online coaching through Quality Gains and um, also my OnlyFans. Uh, my wife and I's OnlyFans are also linked in the description. So if you want to see me naked, see my PP, check that out. And as always, keep making those vegan and RPE gains. Beef. What a relief. When will this poisonous product cease? This is another public service announcement. You can believe it or you can doubt it. Let us begin now with the cow. The way it gets to your plate and how.